I'm Sandeep Dubey. I'm an interventional cardiologist in the Community Health Network. So I'm an interventional cardiologist. I'm involved in all the aspects of uh, interventional cardiology, including coronary stents, peripheral stents, balloon pumps. But my major focus of interest recently has been what we call transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or in short, TAV. It's a cow or a pig valve that's put on a stent, and instead of cracking somebody's chest open and putting a valve through open heart surgery, we can put a valve with a very small incision or percutaneous approach. We take this stented valve, which is compressed on a balloon, and in this compressed form, they can be delivered from the leg um, <clears throat> and can be advanced across the patient's own valve and then inflate it in place. It's done on a beating heart, so patient never goes on heart-lung bypass machine and you have less complications because of that. There's reduced healing time, there is reduced hospital stay, there's early ambulation, patient get up on their feet much faster, and then their overall recovery is much faster with this procedure. They didn't take quite a bit of hit to their body. The success rate is very high, especially in the sicker and elderly population compared to the open heart surgical procedure. One patient that is, uh, you know, working uh, three days a week, she's uh, 95 years old and she's very active. She walks on the treadmill 20 minutes a day. This is a very uh, sick group of people and they require not only care uh, about their heart, but overall care. So myself and our heart team is very uh, intimately involved in the care of these uh, truly sick group of people. Now, I'm grateful that these patients uh, truly trust me with their care, uh, not only their cardiac care, but other issues, and they take my advice. Some of these patients, you know, if they break a bone or hip or something, they go to an orthopedic surgeon, and orthopedic surgeon says, you know, you are 90 something years old, I wouldn't operate. So we act as their mediator. We tell the surgeon, this is not a, you know, ordinary 90 year old who had heart issues. Our aim is not to do the procedure for the sake of doing procedure itself, but to not only improve lifespan, but, but improve lifespan with good quality of life. That's what our aim is. Our program has been up and running now for um, close to three years. Um, it's not only geared towards the transcatheter aortic valve replacement per se, but we have a whole uh, valve clinic that uh, we can take care of patients with any kind of valve disease. These patients are on, on a rapid downhill slope once they get symptoms. Doctors actually call it cancer of the aortic valve because this condition kills faster than five of the most common cancers like lung cancer, ovarian cancer, or breast cancer. And if we get them right when their symptoms start, but they are not debilitated, these patients do much better. Previously, when the only option available for referring physicians was the open heart surgery, they thought that their patient is too high risk, you know, older or other medical problems, that they never send these patients to cardiology to get an open heart surgery procedure done. But now that we have this minimally invasive procedure available, some of these patients do so good that they go directly to home. And uh, we get them into outpatient cardiac rehab and outpatient you know, office visits. And there are other group of people who can go home, but uh, they are not able to take care of themselves fully or their family is not able to take care of them fully. Then we have home healthcare nursing team uh, follow them at home. And then there's a third group of patients that you know, are not are ready to get out of the hospital. Uh, their heart is doing good, but a lot of these have uh, other debilitations uh, that they need to go to rehab facility for a couple of weeks uh, before they go to home. I would strongly encourage all the referring physicians to send these patients as quickly as possible once they develop any kind of symptoms uh, before it's too late. Symptoms that these patients get with aortic stenosis is chest pain or angina, then symptoms of heart failure, mainly shortness of breath, and the third is dizzy spells or what we call syncope. So if any of these three symptoms, chest pain, shortness of breath, dizzy spells happen in a patient with aortic stenosis, um, we would encourage them uh, to send these patients to us.